Good morning and welcome to our teen Sunday school class. Um, today we are going to talk about the greatest gift. And before I do that, I want to give y'all something. Yay. We love gifts. This is their food. Look, they said coffee squares, and I said, like, oh, where are coffee? It says on there. I got them 6740. What do I win? Okay, it's not peanut butter, it's coffee. It's coffee, it's not peanut butter. Does it have peanuts in it or? No. Okay. What do you mean? Where are you guys saying in 6740? Um, I should be a brand because of kind of coffee. Hold on. Wait. No, it's it's not in six seven four. It's November six seven four zero, because it's like a tail number. It really looks like a tail number. It's not peanuts. It's almonds. Great. Mm. Just keep it. You can't eat yeah, almonds. You can't. Right. Just no. Give it back to him. Okay. Thank you. It's a gift. Are we supposed to open it? It's a gift. gift. Yes, you may open it. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can eat it now or you can eat it later. It's okay. Either way, it's fine. Mm. Interesting. Uh, By the way, these are um, Russell Stover toffee squares, and they're individually wrapped, and they are so delicious. I had to take them from my children because I might want to eat the whole bag. <laughs> um, but... So today we're going to be talking about the greatest gift, and I just wanted to give y'all something. Just wanted to give you a little something, and uh, huh? I think this is the greatest gift. <laughs> um, but it was just a little something. Um, but when I gave it to you, I saw how excited you were when you, the ones that can eat it, were, um, and. Sorry, but and you can't have it until. But you were still excited until you found out there was nuts in them. So, um, but just saw how you know excited you were when I gave you the chocolate, and um, that just goes into our our lesson for today, and talking about um, the greatest gift. <coughs> And we're going to talk about Jesus. It's almost Christmas time, and um, we don't want to lose focus on that um, and what it's you know what it's really about. And so we're just going to talk about um, a few things. And um, what we're going to start off is in Isaiah. We're going to go to Isaiah um, chapter six. Page seven hundred six. Got it. Hmm. So it goes back to page numbers only. Mm -hmm. I keep going. I keep going the wrong way, even though I know what it says. Of, uh, even though I know what it says. Sword drills. Okay. So Isaiah six. I do this every time. So is Isaiah. Hmm. And it's chapter yeah. seven. I think it is seven. It's, it's seven, seven fourteen. Four. Seven four. It is seven fourteen. Mm -hmm. no. Wait, why is? Hold on, my Bible is like doing crazy things here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, I'm being pages. serious. Okay, here we go. Some pages. I'm just well, oh, okay. you know oh, when okay. you look okay. at. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> my Bible's not doing crazy things. My eyes oh. are. See, this is okay. why I use the King James Version on my phone. This is the King James Version in my hands. Okay. Um. It's just because you don't know how to read a book. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so Isaiah 7 and 14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. 
and um, this is Old Testament. There are several places in the Old Testament that um, prophesies about the coming of Jesus and tells you different things that come to pass in the New Testament that the Old Testament prophets, not just about Jesus, but different uh, different things about um, different things that were prophesied in the Old Testament were had come true in the New Testament. Not all, but uh, quite a bit of them. Now, um, I don't know why I put Isaiah 6, 9 for so long. That's funny to know. Um, so I, Isaiah talks about um, the holy virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know, know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou of course shall be forsaken of both her kings. And so... Of course, when you look at this scripture and then go to um, the New Testament, it tells you that Mary, who was engaged to Joseph, um, thank you, both, who had in, um, seen anyone was going to bear a child, and um, so that was prophesied there. Um, you can also look in, let's go to Matthew, I have my notes here. Matthew, I have to have them actually. Um, let's go to Matthew 1, 18. How do I put two pages in go that far? Although usually when we talk about the um, birth, when we talk about the first, the birth, the birth, I'm going the first, the birth of Christ, we usually go to Luke. It's mentioned in Matthew also. Actually, um, Luke is the, let's just go to Luke. Okay. Luke is the more, um, what everyone is used to. If my page will allow me to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. All right. <clears throat> all right. So, first of all, in the book of Luke, it talks about um, how Gabriel appears to Zacharias and Elizabeth, and how that Elizabeth, in her old age, was going to have a child. And it talks about the story of Zacharias, who didn't was unsure about it and then became blind and didn't see until they had the child. Correct? Is that right? Okay. Oh. Let's see. Well, he just um, mute. mute. Yeah. He couldn't talk. Blind, but naked. Yeah. How do we No, it wasn't deaf. No, he couldn't. He could hear, but he couldn't yeah, he could hear, yeah. but he couldn't talk. Because they asked what the child's name was supposed to be, and... And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak. Yeah. They asked what the child's name was, and he couldn't tell them what it was. Mm -hmm. And so, it talks about that, and then when you go to Luke um, 1, 26, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him she was troubled at his saying, cast in her mind what manner of salutation this would be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel said, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, <clears throat> she hath be, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called bear who was called barren for with god nothing shall be impossible and mary said behold the handmaid of the lord 
Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Okay. Would you like to talk about this? Yes, we would. Okay, so Mary, which, let's see how you say, espoused to engaged. Joseph is just being, is engaged. Engaged, and, but with a lot more commitment. Yes. Because in, um, commitment, commitment like, <laughs> I'm not surprised. Because when, um, yeah. that term means that if, um, then he would have to legally divorce her because yeah. of the legally binding, um, nature of being a spouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's different from when, how it is, like, Same it's different from how it is yeah. today. Because yeah. now Very if you're different. engaged, like, it's you not break even. it off and you don't have to do anything legally. It's just, yeah. It's just, Rude. yeah. Rude. Um, <laughs> and so she's just, you know, she's kind of just going about her day and um, the angel Gabriel came to her and said, first of all, he said, hell, Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. First, he wanted to, before he told her what happened, he wanted to encourage her. Mm-hmm. Here's why I'm here. But first, let me encourage you and tell you this. Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed <coughs> art thou among women. That's very encouraging, if mm-hmm. you ask me. Um, um, because... Nowadays, you have so much negativity, and you you need someone to lift you up, to encourage you. And this is, even the angel Gabriel knew that. He's about to give her some news that she probably would have never really expected. And so, before he gave her the news, let me encourage you and tell you this. And then... It said, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind, what manner of salutation shall this be? <laughs> you know, you know, wait, what is this? What's going on? Yeah, what is happening? Um, which... Well, normal people would say shalom, but you, you have a weird, you should, normal people say hello, but you're like... Hell. Yeah. <laughs> now that are highly favorite, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> well, when you, yeah. well, Mary, being a being a young girl, um, will you please let Clayton in? Come on in. What, what um, Mary, you being a young girl and getting this type of news, it would it would be kind of like, you know, like, what what do you mean? But. After that, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Okay, so Mary didn't know anybody, and now she's about to have a baby. And that was confusing also, and so then she says this, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Then he he goes on and tells her about her cousin. And behold, that cousin Elizabeth shall also, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who who was called barren. So, not only is Mary, Mary was chosen. Like, there probably could have been anyone that the Lord could have chose to bear his, you know, for Jesus to be born. But he chose Mary. She was, she was highly favored of God. And um, she was blessed among women. And... When she was told this, she was scared, but the angel told her to fear not. And we talked about that last week, talking about, you know, fear and uh, no fear. You know, when uh, not necessarily the angel comes to us, but when we feel like we can't get through a situation and we, it's just fear, anxiety, stress, overwhelmed, um, 
But when we take it to the Lord or take it to our pastor or, you know, our parents who gives us that encouraging word that we don't have to be afraid about it and then we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And then it says in verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, some things are going to be impossible. Um, with God, my family's things are going to be impossible. No, nothing. Nothing shall be impossible. Your family situation with God, it's not impossible. Um, the things that go on in school with God, nothing shall be impossible. It's not just talking about Mary's situation. It's talking about all situations. And... Um, knowing that the Lord is, you know, with us. And then this is, through all that, and this is what Mary says. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Okay. My young ladies. She was looking at this side of the table. <laughs> My young ladies, um, when you, not necessarily this situation, but when you come to a situation and you feel, you feel trouble about it, you, you know, you're afraid about it, you know, would you be as calm as Mary was? When she got told that she was about to have, that she was going to bear um, Jesus, honestly, I would not have been as calm as she was. Honestly, we actually yes. don't like, know. she didn't have to be calm. She could have been first screaming. of all, a weird random dude shows up and starts complimenting me, and then <laughs> says that I'm. What? Oh. <laughs> like he? Okay, he, she's. Like, I would have been a lot more troubled than she sounded. Because she said she cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. I would have literally said, like, what are you what are you doing in my house? What are you doing in my house? Can we get the same question? Because that's kind of like, you know. No, so, it's a totally different situation. We would have been the ones going in. <laughs> but what about you, Kimmy? Would you be as calm as Mary was? Definitely not. No, I don't think I would have been either. Especially if... You're in your house, and then somebody just comes in, and I mean, like this is this is this is being being honest, and like if I look up and there's someone in my house that wasn't there before, I would be freaked out. Well, he didn't like, appear. He wow. just said he came in. Right. She probably just walked in the door. <laughs> That's even weirder. <laughs> but when you think about stuff like this, then just appearing like, there, <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, Either way, just somebody walking Either in. Either way, it's just. He's like, ah, it was if just he appears, just... then you know it's a supernatural thing. But if they walk in the door, <laughs> what? You know and what I, I mean? didn't open it. Can I say my answer to this? People believed in ghosts back then. She probably just think it was a ghost. Just, ah, and then, yeah, but they don't know. really. You can know it's a spirit, supernatural thing, but if somebody appeared I mean, in this front is, of me, I just well, no, this is the old, the beginning of the like the Old Testament. So you're not a young lady, so, as you previously stated. That's why we don't want you to. My opinion is that I would be like, oh great, then I can buy a kids meal, so then I don't gotta pay all this money for a big kids meal. What? You know they didn't have kids meals back then, right? So, oh, so we'd be, we wouldn't be as answer. calm as Mary. No, I think was. I would. No, I, I, I don't know. You're not as calm I don't as Mary know. If somebody showed up to your house and told you you were pregnant, how would you feel? I would feel good. I would not no. jump around because it would probably kill the baby. But so anyway, it's we're it's done like with that. So we are so done with that. Sometimes yes, I wish that Clayton was a good um, class. Like so we wouldn't be as calm, but Mary. The angel of the Lord told her to fear not. Right. Mm -hmm. And that the Lord was with her. And that um, she was going to bear a son. And he was going to be the son of God. And his name shall be Jesus. And just like that. And then... Um, 
you when you, like just going through and going through the rest of the story Mary goes to see her cousin Elizabeth and um, even <laughs> verse 41 and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Before she can even tell, before Mary could even tell Elizabeth, Elizabeth heard her voice, and the babe leaped in her womb and was excited. And that made Elizabeth excited because she knew what was about to happen. And Elizabeth was going to um, be the mother of John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, which is a, one of the other great men that is talked about in the Bible. John the Baptist, fast forward some, John the Baptist got to baptize his cousin. And when you read about it and everything, you see John said, you know, I'm not worthy to do this, but he did and was able to um, experience and witness, you know, someone so great and powerful be baptized by, you know, just a simple, that feels, he felt like a simple man. And, but that was John the Baptist um, and Jesus were cousins. And so you knew that what was about to happen, what Mary, the baby that Mary was carrying was a great gift. A great gift, not just to them, but to us. Mm -hmm. To the baby that was in her cousin's womb. He knew. It, because it says, the babe leaped in her womb. And then Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And here's some more encouraging blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb so it's like more encouragement because I'm sure that Mary has to tell Joseph because it doesn't say after that Mary went and told Joseph what was going on and then um, and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me for lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told, told her from the Lord. So, even just, you know, when you hear something wonderful, even if you don't jump up like in the physical, but in, in your mind, in your, in your soul, you feel that, and it makes you excited. So this is what happened to Elizabeth, but it made her, it, it made the baby in her excited. Because remember, she it says that she's in her sixth month, so she's she's six months pregnant. And man, when you my six months pregnant, you're pretty busy. And so, and you're able to see the baby a little more distinguished as it's moving around. And so. <laughs> Imagine being there, hearing your cousin, and then your baby's leap. It, it didn't say it moved. It said it leaped for joy in her <laughs> womb. And so, try not to get all crazy and everything about that. But being pregnant when um, Amani or Nehemiah moved, it was, it was like my whole, it was like my whole belly it kind of like shifted. I'm like, oh my goodness, this child, they need to go to sleep because I'm trying to go to sleep. But she was just there, and this baby leaped for joy. And leaping isn't just, woohoo. It's like, woohoo, you know, it's like excited. And, but even the, the, the baby was excited about what's going to happen and how wonderful and powerful this gift that Mary was carrying was going to be. And, you know, not just in for Christmas time, but in general, thinking about the gift that was given to us and how we didn't feel like we even deserved it. 
and I don't know, like giving y'all that chocolate, I don't know if you felt like you deserved it or not, but I felt, I was like, you know, we're going to talk about a gift, so here's a little something. And it shows you also that you are appreciated, that you, you, people do think of you. And so giving, you know, giving someone a gift, a birthday gift you know it's your birthday and here's my gift to you letting you know that I'm thinking about you and that I hope you have a great birthday and the gift God is the greatest gift of all because he gave his son and Mary was the one that was chosen to bear that gift. And uh, I believe she did a mighty fine job. And Joseph, when you go, when you read later on, you see that in a dream, um, the angel of the Lord comes to him in a dream and tells him to take Mary. Um, calms Joseph's nerves also um, because he was going to put her away. And the angel of the Lord comes to him and speaks to him also and lets him know that the baby that she's carrying is from God and that he doesn't have to be afraid and to, you know, help Mary, encourage Mary, lift up Mary. And Mary did the same to Joseph. And Joseph... He took on that role of being Jesus' earthly father, of being, Joseph was a carpenter, so as Jesus grew up, he grew, he grew up around those things. Joseph, he learned Joseph's traits, his earthly father's traits, but he still did not put aside his heavenly father's traits. And, you know, they, they raised from, you know, just reading about, Jesus when he was like when they talk about him and everything just reading about him he was smart um, he was he was respectful and so he had all those he was raised that way and the gift that was given to us was going to be taken away from us and I know that sounds kind of, you know, like, what do you mean? The gift that was given to us is going to get taken away. But for us to really receive, to really have that gift, Jesus was going to have to die. He was going to have to die for us. So the gift became even greater because he gave his life for us. And when we... Yes. And we also didn't know that he would come back either. Well, huh? <laughs> yes, he did. He will. Yeah, he will. But like, if we're talking about like why? It might be much. Or why he asked? Yeah. Um, what well, got passed for me? It was because it wasn't because he would die and not come back. Mm -hmm. It was because he was gonna die. Yeah. He was gonna hang with nails in his hands and feet mm -hmm. and die. Because he was still flesh he's still human and honestly nobody really wants to die it wasn't even that as much even it was just the act of taking on all the sins of the world when he had been sinless That's too yeah. that was a big part of it yeah but he knew um, that right also it was really bad he knew that it had to be done <clears throat> mm -hmm. to give us the full gift of salvation yes this is true and for us to be able to receive that, he did that, and what does it say in John, let's go to John chapter 15, 14 and 15. <laughs> 
these, uh, 14, 25, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have, I have said unto you. So he was telling us that, you know, I'm present with you now, but when I leave, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Father is going to send him in my name, and teach you all things, and bring to remembrance what whatsoever I have said unto you. And so... He wasn't going to just leave us and not send some help. Right, because he said it's expedient for you that I go away. Yes. But he knew that since he was going away from this earth, mm -hmm. then he was sending another comforter. Yes. You know, everyone has their, you know, their traditions and everything that they do at Christmas. And I just don't want us to forget who, who gave the greatest gift and who the greatest gift was and with the holiday rush and everything like that we tend and to find presents for everyone yes decorating and mm -hmm. meeting up with people yep and that's families coming into yeah. town and that's, that's the beauty of the celebration mm -hmm. sometimes it's easy to forget why you're celebrating why you're celebrating yes it is true and so let us so let us not forget why we, why Christmas Christ is celebrated. Not saying that giving gifts and um, different things like that isn't okay, but remember as you gave these gifts and share the gift that was given to you, to others. Um, tell them about the greatest gift that you received when you got saved and the Lord came into your heart and everything changed and how um, amazing it is to know that God will give his only son for you, for me, for anyone really. And so Let's not forget that Jesus Christ is the greatest gift that was given to us. And um, I pray that you enjoyed our Sunday school class and that you got some help from it. And pray that you have a great rest of the day. And don't forget to join us for our Sunday morning service.